What's keeping you up at night? Workforce has become the number one issue for communities across America. Workforce capacity has moved from page 20 of economic development packages to page one. The old adage, location, 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 means absolutely nothing for communities that cannot produce a workforce. For executive leadership and companies and education and chambers of commerce and economic development, the question is how do we grow, how do we retain, and how do we recruit a world-class workforce? Science and technology has run away with our youth and left the rest of us in the dark ages. According to the National Council on Competitiveness, technical jobs, jobs that require technical training, are growing at five times the rate of other occupations. For baby boomers, the question is, do we change? For echo boomers or millennials, the question is, why do I care and how is this relevant to me? And for Generation Xers, the question is, can we bridge the gap? For communities, how do we compete in a globalized world where everything is increasingly linked together? Geographies, industries, technologies, labor, all moving at light speed. If the world is flat, where do we fit in? How do we align education and workforce needs? Given that 25% of high school students don't graduate and 90% of the fastest growing jobs in America require some post-secondary education. Some communities are focused on STEM or science, technology, engineering, and math programs where the key need is to produce a culture of innovation, a community that embraces change, that is adaptive, and that acts in the future today. I would highly recommend him because he's a, he's a talent. He sees things through a different lens, through a different perspective. And it's a perspective that community leaders need to share because, uh, as, as you said, it's, it's science nonfiction. It's here, it's now. He showed us all where our future is and, and where our present is. What, what can we do now with, our, with technology? What can our students do now with it? Uh, not even five years, but right now. So I think his, his, what he has to say is he's showing us what we're, we need to be doing right now with our students. I thought he was a very dynamic speaker. Uh, he captivated me for the entire length of the program. What Jim does ties it all together. How can I help you? Well, I've designed speeches and workshops and delivered them across the nation for three different target audiences. First, in working with communities, I work on moving community stakeholders from why they need to change to how they need to change. In working with teachers in K-12, community and technical colleges, and universities, we work on engagement strategies and learning strategies for millennials or echo boomers. And finally, with students, we connect the dots between the relevance of academic content and rigor and technology, which students are really interested in. Who is Jim Brazell? Jim Brazell is a professional orator, researcher, and consultant. He has worked for think tanks on issues related to international technology transfer and commercialization. He has worked for community and technical colleges to study emerging technologies and make program recommendations. He has supported and created K-12 STEM programs to integrate the arts and build the workforce of the future today. Jim's recent publications and work include publishing several technology briefs and reports for the Texas State Technical College System, including Mechatronics, Video Games, Machine-to-Machine -machine Computing, Jim is an emerging speaker with tremendous accolades from audiences, which include the National Council on Workforce Education, the National Coalition of Advanced Technology Centers, the National School Board Association, the National Education Computing Conference, the World Congress on Information Technology, South by Southwest, Chautauqua Institute, and many more. If your community or association is dealing with the issues of globalization and you want to know how to move from the why to the how, you need today's speaker. You need Jim Brazell. Oh wow, it's, it's dynamic. I think he held this audience um, of, of teenagers for an hour and a half better than anybody I've ever seen. Uh, they were connecting with him and he, had, he knew all the right buttons to push. Uh, high interest, uh, but a lot of information. He was perfect. He explained some stuff about the technology and all that, and I, you know, the new generation. I think I think the biggest thing from Jim's speech is that with the high school students here, he got he captured their attention. Starting out with the video game, everyone was looking, and one of the things I kept doing during the during the talk was looking back at the students to see how well engaged they were to the message come across, because I know I was. 
and he did a great job doing that.